Hello and welcome back to Underlab. Undertale is full of loving and friendly monsters. For example, there's Toriel. She treats us as if we were her child, and seems happy to mother us despite clearly being a completely different species. Let's not forget the famous butterscotch and cinnamon pie she bakes for us, that can restore us to full health. It's just that good. Then there's Undyne, who hunted us down and tried to kill us. Oh, uh, well there's Asgore, who killed six presumably innocent humans. Uh, right. I guess you could always make an argument for Alphys, but then Metaton was originally built as a machine for killing humans. Well thankfully they all learned to love Frisk eventually. However, were the monsters always so kind and rational? Despite what we're told, that may very well have not been the case. Let's find out. The game's introduction explains to us that a war between humans and monsters led to the monsters being sealed underground. Meanwhile, Plax and Waterfall further elaborate upon exactly what happened. We are told the humans' motives for sealing the monsters underground. They were perceived as a threat due to their ability to merge with human souls. We know that this was no idle fear. Just look at Omega Flowey and Azriel. They're the results of what happens when a monster absorbs a human soul. However, there seems to have been a fatal flaw of the human's judgement. From how the monsters are depicted to us in Undertale, they seem to be a peace-loving race who have been forced into a war of humanity. Most of those who attack us are unwilling and are doing so more out of a sense of self-preservation than anything else. Therefore, why exactly were the humans so afraid of the monsters' ability to absorb souls? It surely wouldn't pose a threat if they never intended to use it. In something of a giant twist, could it be that the player is lied to by these plaques? There's several things we need to keep in mind here. The plaques were written by monsters, not by humans. They'd have a vested interest in giving a positive depiction of their own species. We as players have no reason to treat them as a factual truth, particularly seeing how the monsters sometimes contradicts what we know is true. For example, the essay on souls we read in Snowden's library tells us that humans can't use magic, despite a human mage clearly being betrayed in the game's introduction, along with the barrier they seal monsters behind being called a magical barrier. If that's not magic, then what is? Something else that's extremely suspect is that the monsters have knowledge that they can do this to begin with. In fact, it appears to be common knowledge, what with most monsters anticipating that Asgore will absorb the six human souls himself in order to break the barrier. Lastly, if we're to believe this process has never happened before, then how do they know what a monster that has absorbed a human soul will look like? There is, after all, an illustration of a monster infused with a human soul on one of the plaques. It seems, therefore, that we could be getting lied to. If we strictly follow the monster's narrative, the humans are the big bad guys who attacked first because they feared what the monsters could do, not what they had done. However, the monsters just so happen to know exactly what happens if a monster absorbs a human soul. Information that I have no idea how they could have obtained if they hadn't physically done that before. Is it possible that the humans attacked monster kind, not out of an assumption, but because the monsters were known for deliberately stealing their souls? Now, I know what you may be thinking. The monsters are likely aware of their ability to absorb human souls because Azrael absorbed Chara, or Kara's soul. However, there's several flaws with this logic. I'm not sure if the monsters really had any idea about Azrael and Chara's plan to escape to the surface. As far as I'm aware, Azrael reached the surface, then returned to the underground all without the knowledge of his parents. There would have been no time in between to observe the effects of a human soul upon a monster. Then it's worth considering that he only had a single human soul. I doubt he turned into some scary creature like the illustration on the plaque describes. After all, we're told that Azriel never attacks back, so he likely had no reason to change his form, if he even could. Finally, what really makes this extremely unlikely is that the plaques are described as ancient writing on the walls. If they're ancient, then I doubt they were written post Azriel's death. The passage of time in Undertale is unclear to say the least, but it doesn't seem to me that Azriel has been dead for centuries. Remember, he was recorded with a camera, as we find out in the True Lab, so he likely hasn't been dead that long. So, what does all of this tell us? The monsters know they can absorb human souls, they know what happens when they do it, and it's not because of Azriel. Therefore, it must have happened before, and likely with the intent of killing humans, considering that at least one monster in the past, whoever it was, absorbed enough souls to transform into something terrifying. Therefore, it isn't as much of a sob story for the monsters as we're led to believe. Perhaps they were trapped underground for a very good reason. Not only that, but I think it's unlikely that that was the humans' only reason for sealing the monsters underground. Are they really as weak as the plaques claim? Many monsters can defeat us easily enough. It's only because of Frisk's determination that we can keep reloading and trying again. The six humans who fell down before weren't so lucky and we're never told that they took down hundreds of monsters with them. The monsters may seem weak to the player, 
but we have to remember that Frisk isn't an ordinary human, so it's possible that the monsters are a lot stronger than is claimed. After all, if a single human can defeat all of them, how are any of them alive today? What would be the point in going to war with a race of creatures so weak and so easily defeated? The monster's ingenuity is also something to be both admired and feared. Just look at the core in Hotland, apparently designed by Gaster. How did the monsters manage such a technological feat in such a terrible situation? Maybe the monsters really are just that brilliant, but it seems to me that they are in fact a lot more stronger, a lot more clever and a lot more cunning than we're led to believe. It's no wonder why the humans viewed them as a threat. Of course, it's difficult to argue that the monsters are some superpower threat to the humans these days. Trapped underground for presumably centuries, they seem desperate rather than threatening. And we have to keep in mind that a child has the power to literally commit genocide on their entire race. That isn't to say they weren't once more formidable, however. In conclusion, I believe that the plaques omit certain parts of the monster's history. They say that history is written by the victor, but if the losers find themselves completely isolated from said victor, there's no reason they can't write their own history. I think it's quite likely that the monsters posed much more of a threat to humanity than we're otherwise told which means the humans were likely more justified in sealing them underground than we think. Don't get me wrong though, it seems now whatever threat the monsters once posed is mostly extinguished. After all, many of them desire peace, and the bright future the true pacifist ending promises for both monsters and humans helps make up for whatever atrocities both sides committed during the original war. Well, what do you think? If we had more understanding of what exactly a soul is, then perhaps the mystery of the monster's history would be easier to resolve. Scientists here at the Underlab are still trying to work it out, though we're being careful not to repeat the mistakes of the past. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.